Hello everyone. Almost exactly one year ago, in July 2019, I did an unboxing for the first Death End Request game. And I will put the link to that video in the description below so you can catch up with it if you haven't seen it. Today, I received the second game, Death End Request 2, um, from the European store where I purchase all my Idea Factory limited editions. And obviously I'm very excited about this because I've been talking quite a lot about Death End Request over the last year and I've mentioned it many times. To me, it was a bit of a sleeper hit, I would say. I hadn't really expected an awful lot when I started the game and I was honestly surprised how much I liked it. Now, it probably speaks directly to my interests because I love stories about characters that are trapped in a virtual world. Uh, and of course, we've had many of those, whether it's Dot .hack or Sword Art Online. And Death End Request is another story uh, of people trapped inside a game world. The interesting thing about that story is that you operate in two parallel worlds. One of them is inside the game, a virtual world, and the other one is the real world where the characters are trying to solve the mystery of how the characters got trapped in inside the game. That side of things works a bit almost like a visual novel uh, where you're trying to unravel a mystery. And then in the virtual world, you have your battles as usual. And the combat system is, I think, very enjoyable with sort of a tactical placement of your party members, which happens in real time. Uh, it's, it's really nicely executed. So for me, that was a surprise favourite over the last year. Not surprisingly, I was really looking forward um, to the second game. So I wanted to do a quick unboxing. As you can see, I've already taken the outer cellophane off the items because, because with the COVID situation we're living in these days, I do any unwrapping uh, with disposable gloves on and with with disinfectant wiping down the items on the outside uh, that doesn't lend itself uh, very well to a to a nice relaxing unboxing i can assure you they arrived just this morning and we want to have a look now what's inside let's start off with the game itself and as you can see, they also sent a nice little collectible card. So this is the game edition, the export edition for my region, which explains the, um, the age rating sticker there. I'll just turn it over. Yes, you can see the region 4 on it, which is uh, you know Australia, New Zealand, Oceania. I'll just have a look inside this box. And I see on the back it details a bit of the, the background to the story. A girl in escape of her past comes to the mountain town of Lequara, searching for her long lost sister. Little does she know the town is home to buried secrets, dark creatures that prowl the night streets and a sinister sacrificial sequence. Can she fight the darkness or will the darkness consume her? So it sounds like the second game has upped the darkness factor and probably is even more horror um, oriented than the first one. The first one had some light horror elements, but it sounds like this one's gone really more into horror. So um, that's the game. And it comes with a poster. 
And you know what happens with posters in this household? Poodle Pa takes them to be laminated, and then we try and find a space on a wall somewhere if there's any left to put it up. So that's that. That looks nice. I'm happy with that. There's a lot of detail in the poster, and it looks like we've got the main characters. Most of the characters are new. I think this is the new main character called Mia. But certainly one important character returns, and that is Sheena. She returns from the first game, and I'm really, really pleased about that, because I will show you now my figurine of Sheena Ninomiya. And that is her in the first Death End Request game. She became an instant favourite with me, which is why I pounced when I saw that a figurine was being manufactured of her. It's a really, really nicely done figurine with a lot of detail. She even has the headband on top saying Enigma Games, uh, which is, you know, a part of the story for the first game. Now, one reason why Death End Request, right from the start, from the first game, and now the second one, incorporates horror elements, is because the scenario writer is, in fact, a horror game writer. He is Makoto Kedwin, and he is well known for writing the a corpse party and stories and games. So not surprisingly, uh, since horror is his background, I expect Compile Heart picked him because of that, um, he integrated that into the story. So that's an interesting conjunction to have an RPG with those sorts of um, horror elements integrated. Uh, I, I quite like the combination. Otherwise, the development team, many of them have returned from the first game, so there is consistency across the board, which is nice. And in particular, the lead artist is, again, Kei Nanameda, with his very, very distinctive style. I'll have a look in the box now, which is uh, just like the first one, exactly the same uh, size, exactly the same uh, lift up. A box lid. Here we have the items with good uh, cardboard separators inside so everything is, uh, you know, kept safe. And I'll just get the first item out. And we have the soundtrack here. I will just get the uh, my trusty German cheese knife. This is the soundtrack. And that's the inside artwork. And that's the track listing. I've already put the disc on so we can have it very softly in the background. I hope you can hear it. So now we'll have a look at the steel book. Um, Idea Factory have their own way of doing steel books. They tend to be a larger size than your regular steel book. And I find them for that reason particularly collectible. So I'll just turn that over and that's the back. You'll probably get a reflection that's it's almost impossible to avoid. As before I've had um, steel book with the, the first game and also with Dragon Star Vanir and they're always very beautifully done i have to say um they've got wonderful um, design on the front it's it's reasonably shiny the artwork really pops off the steel case it's got the um the title on the spine which is nice too so yeah i knew i would not be disappointed with that and finally we have okay Two. It says Death End Request 
so this is a bit of story to link between one and two, I would say. Yep, that will make for some nice reading. Uh, there's quite a lot here. There are 48 pages here, so there's some bedtime reading here. And this is the hardback art book. Yes, the Chronicle of Liquara. A quick look inside and I will show you a few pictures but nothing that obviously that would give away much of the story. Obviously with a black um, background a very dark theme being pursued here. There's some concept art here at the front, then package art and then character art. And that's always nice, I think. So this is the main character. And she's called Mai. It sounds like she's in, she's orphaned and uh, Mai's quiet, gloomy disposition makes it difficult to cope with the loss of her family. The other female characters, one of them looks particularly cute, and that is Liliana. My favourite, uh, Shina Ninomiya returns. However, you notice straight away, she looks very different. Her appearance, her clothing is quite different from the first game, and for obvious reasons. There is a lot of character art. Everybody gets their, their own page. Um, I, I remember those two from the first game. So there are quite a few reappearances, which is nice because they were all uh, intriguing, interesting, enjoyable characters. And yeah, that completes the art book which is, as always, nicely done. So that completes the limited edition, apart from one item, and that is <clears throat> this rather large shoulder bag. So this is quite a sturdy, quite well-made bag, with the flap being detachable with the character art on it. It's um, simply Velcro and it lifts up the flap like that. But you can also, if you wish, detach it completely from the back. It's got useful pockets in the front here, an extra pocket and then the large bag inside. I reckon you could stuff quite a lot in here, and it's well made enough that it uh, should last the distance quite a bit. In fact, I was wondering, I thought you could fit a lot of assistance in here. Mishi, would you like to, when we go travelling, would you like to go in the bag? Mishi certainly would fit in here, as would some of the other ones, like uh, Sugamon would fit in here. Morgana would as well. And there we have a bag of assistants. Now that's what I call useful. Um, you don't mind, do you guys? <laughs> Just a bit of fun here. So I've turned up the music a little bit so you can hear it better. Um, I hope you, you enjoyed that display. I won't be playing the game, the second game, immediately, but obviously it goes into the queue. And I will, as usual, report on what I find once I play it. Thank you very much for watching. Keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.